What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to write a piecewise function from a graph, right? So as you can see, we basically have this trapezoid looking graph over here, and there's three different parts to it, right? So first we have this line, this function right here, right? That's a single line, a single slope. Then we have this other line, this other function right here. And then lastly, we have this last line, this last function, right? So three different parts, three different equations, three different slopes. Okay, so that means our piecewise function is going to have three parts to it. So we're going to say that y is equal to, and then we're going to put those three equations right here. Okay, so let's start with this first one right here. So how do we find the equation of this line? Well, this line right here, we can find it using slope intercept form. So remember that's y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y intercept. So the slope, remember, is just the rise over the run, okay? So to get from one point to another point on this line, we have to go up one, two, and then over one, all right? So the slope over here is gonna be equal to two over one. And then the y intercept, or in other words, where we hit the y axis, is right here at positive four, right? So then the y, the y intercept is gonna be positive four. So if we plug those numbers in, we're gonna get that y is equal to, and two over one, that simplifies down to just two, right? So we can write this as two x plus four, okay? So that's the equation of this line right here. So y is equal to two x plus four. Now, as you can see, this line doesn't go forever in either direction, right? It basically just goes from here, okay, from x is equal to negative two, and then it stops right here, right, where x is equal to zero. This is the space right here where this line is living, okay? So from negative two to zero. So we're gonna say that this equation is valid if x is between negative two and zero, okay? So we can write that as x has to be greater than or equal to negative two, and x has to be less than zero, okay? And here we're putting the equal to symbol or attaching it to the inequality because as you can see here at x is equal to negative two, we have a closed circle. And then over here, it's kind of hard to see because all these lines are overlapping each other, but we do have an open circle right there. Okay, so that's why we're using just a less than symbol and not a less than or equal to symbol. Okay, so that is the first line. Now let's quickly find these other two lines right here. So next let's find this one right here. And again, I'm gonna tell you that this side has a closed circle and this side has an open circle. Okay, and as you can see, it's just a straight horizontal line, right? So if we didn't put limits on this line, you can see that this line would basically just run through right here, okay? Now, what is this line right here? Well, as you can see, it runs through this number four, okay? So the, this line, this graph, is simply y is equal to four, positive four, okay? So here we could say that y is equal to positive four. Now, obviously, this line does not run across the entire graph, right? It specifically goes from this line right here, this vertical line, at x is equal to zero, and then it stops right here at this line at x is equal to positive two, all right? So then here, we're gonna say that y is equal to four if, again, x is between zero and positive two, okay? So if x is between zero and positive two. So here, we're gonna say that x has to be bigger than zero, right, greater than zero, and remember, we have a closed circle right here at x is equal to zero. So we're gonna say greater than or equal to. And then we have uh, an open circle over here. So we're gonna say that x is simply less than two, right, smaller than two, okay? So then that's the second part. And then lastly, we have this line right here. And as you can see, again, I'm gonna tell you that we have a closed circle right there. And as you can see, we have an open circle right here. Okay, now to find the equation of this line right here, again, we just wanna use slope intercept form. So y is equal to 
mx plus b. Now the slope here, remember, it's the rise over the run. So the rise, in this case, would be in the negative direction, right? We have to go down two spaces and then over one, right? Down two over one. So here the slope would be negative two over one. And then the y-intercept, well, as you can see, the line doesn't hit the y-intercept, right? So we have to extend it to see where it would hit, okay? So again, uh, to get from one point to the other, we could just go up two over one, right? Up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, all right? So if we extended this line, you can see we would hit it right here at positive eight. So the y-intercept would be positive eight. Okay, so if we plug those numbers in, we would get that y is equal to uh, negative two divided by one is just negative two, right? So we could just write that as negative two x plus eight, right? So the equation of this line right here is y is equal to negative two x plus eight, right? Now again, this line doesn't go that far, right? We have limits on this line. So this line, as you can see, goes from right here from x is equal to two to right here where x is equal to positive four. Okay, so we're gonna say that this line is valid if x is between two and four, right? Positive two, positive four. And again, here at positive two, you can see we have a closed circle. So we're gonna say that x has to be greater than or equal to positive two. And over here at four, we have an open circle. So here we're just gonna say that x has to be less than four. All right, now lastly, let's talk about the domain and the range, right? So let's clean some of this up. Okay, so let's start with the do, yeah, the domain. So remember the domain are just your limits that go side to side, right? So the limits side to side, right, horizontally of our graph, as you can see, would be from here, at x is equal to negative two to here at x is equal to four, right? Those are our horizontal limits from side to side, okay? Now, as you can see, we have a closed circle at negative two. Whenever there's a closed circle, you use a bracket. And if there's an open circle, like on this side, you use parentheses, okay? So to write the domain here, we can say, again, it goes from negative two to four, okay? So we could say it goes from negative two to positive four. And negative two has a closed circle, so we're gonna use a bracket. And four has an open circle, so we're gonna use a parenthesis. Okay, so that would be the domain for this uh, graph, right? Now, lastly, the range. So the range, on the other hand, goes up and down, right? It's our vertical limits. So the top part, the highest part on this graph would be right here at y is equal to four, and the lowest limit on any parts of our graphs would be right here, at y is equal to zero. Okay, and as you can see, we do have a closed circle here at the bottom, so we can include it, and we do have some closed circles up here, so we're going to, we're going to include four, right? So that means we're gonna use brackets up here, and we're gonna use brackets down here, okay? So the range, again, goes from the, sm the smallest number is zero, the biggest number is four, so we're gonna say from zero to four, and they both get brackets. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.